Hard things are going to happen. Painful things are going to happen, even to good people. Have you thought this week about how little you have control over? And pass it on. Share the gospel clear and strong. Stand for, claim your heritage of truth. Welcome to Heritage of Truth. Today we have as our guest, Pastor David Beecham. Welcome. Glad to be here. I want to discuss with you that age-old question, if God is good, why do bad things happen? Well, basically, you have to go back to the, the book of Genesis because the, of the, what happened in the Garden of Eden mm -hmm. with Adam and Eve. What happened was is that after the fall, the, um, the earth is cursed. And so everything um, on the earth, that includes us, we're, we're living under the curse of sin. And so because of that, I mean, in the Garden of Eden, everything was perfect. I mean, the animals got along. I mean, you know, the lions didn't eat the lambs, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But after the, after the fall and after the curse, everything went wrong. The roses, um, thorns, uh, the animals began, um, became ferocious. Uh, Adam and Eve, I mean, they even had issues. I mean, you know, the two brothers, Cain and Abel. So from there, all the way down, even up into our day, you know, um, there's, there's disease, um, and that's part of, of, of the fallenness that happened in the Garden of Eden. So, I mean, it's just sort of like a domino effect. And the world's not getting um, sweeter, it's getting worse and worse. And that's, of course, that's a you know, prelude to the coming of Christ. Last fall, Hurricane Matthew hit St. Augustine. You're, mm -hmm. the, you're the pastor of, a, of Crescent Beach Baptist Church in St. Augustine, Florida. And Hurricane Matthew affected a lot of your people. So can you speak a little bit to that and the after effects of it? First of all, the fact that it, it, it turned about 40 to 50 miles off our coast really was the grace of God. Because if we'd have gotten a direct hit, it would have been just you know, untold devastation. Um, but because that slight turn, um, you know, we did have some folks that lost everything. Their houses were, um, you know, had four to five feet of water inside of them. And the majority of them, survival mode just kicked in. They, they understood that they loved their homes, they loved their possessions, but they know that it's just, it's just stuff. No lives were lost. Um, now the inconvenience set in because they're having to get everything rebuilt. St. Augustine was blessed in that way, but mm -hmm. then just a little bit north of us in Georgia, mm -hmm. they had two storms within three weeks, and the first one devastated the, the neighborhoods, but there was no loss of life. I don't need to rehearse for you what this week has been like. Even some who were without uh, power for a while and got it back on or did not have trees in their houses. There are multiple stories of getting in closets and bathrooms and everywhere you could get thinking that the worst was about to happen. And for many, it did. 3,500 homes damaged. Probably 10,000 plus trees down. Much of what you are used to seeing in Albany in a landscape will be changed for decades to come. And yet in the middle of that, when words like disbelief and fear and uncertainty and chaos come, there's a word of hope and there's a word of help. When life presses in on us and when life throws us a curve, we're not always ready for it. If you look at the map of the red zones where there was the most intense damage, the devastation and the destruction is unbelievable. You know, the why question is a big question. Not many of us ask the why not me question. Uh, if you were spared, you were spared for a reason. And you and I, if we were spared, we were not spared to sit on our blessed assurance and let people suffer while we fold our clothes and eat our meals. Because next time it could be you. There'll be another disaster, folks. That's why we need to be equipped and we need to be engaged. Just two weeks after Michael Catt preached this sermon, an F3 tornado devastated Albany and other parts of southwest Georgia. This time, there was much loss of life. The second time, uh -huh. there was loss of life, all ages, from really young to really old. Sometimes God protects us like He protected St. Augustine. Sometimes He doesn't. Right. Um, how, how do you answer that? God's grace is, is broad enough that it can, it can take care of both of those needs. Mm -hmm. um, again, you've got to go back to the fall and the curse that, um, you know, hard things are going to happen, painful things are going to happen, um, even to good people. 
mm-hmm. and and God's grace is sufficient and efficient, um, you know, to help us get through those things. I think back in in the book of Isaiah, and it's also in Second Chronicles, where Isaiah they were surrounded by Sennacherib, um, the the wicked king. He was coming in, the general. He was going to come in and just completely destroy them. And they had a prayer meeting. Um, he had written an edict and he brought it. He was standing outside the wall, looking up to the Israelites and. Uh, the king had told them, just listen to what they say, but don't answer them. Don't get in debate and argument with them. And so what happened was is that Isaiah got the uh, the scroll, that er- the, the threats and everything was written on how the, we're going to destroy you the next day, all these things. And all the other nations we've come through, their God was not able to you know, protect them. And so you know, what do you think your God's going to do? Well, he took it up uh, into it's like a prayer chapel and laid it out before the Lord. And he says, Lord, can you, do you see this? And that night, um, Isaiah and um, Hezekiah went to sleep. Next morning they woke up. And there was 185,000 Assyrian soldiers dead. And uh, God sent the angel of the Lord and, and took care of them. We would say, boy, that's a picture of God's power. It's a picture of God's grace because Israelites mm-hmm. couldn't defeat them. But here's what the psalmist says. Psalm 121. I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. For where shall my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to slip. He who keeps you will not slumber. And behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun will not smite you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will protect you from all evil. He will keep your soul. The Lord will guard your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forever. When life presses in, when we get a gut punch, when everything changes and when we're overwhelmed, the question we ask is, where can I go for help? Who can I turn to? And this psalm pictures God as a sentinel on a watchtower, watching over His people, watching over His land. God is speaking here, obviously, of Jerusalem and of Israel, but it also applies to us. God watches over us. And there are three things I want you to see quickly this morning. First of all, He is the God of creation. He watched over creation. God created that kind of power. We, we know the world has fallen. We know that man is, is sinful. And we know that creation groans. And in times like this, it reminds us we need God. Have you thought this week about how little you have control over You had no control whether a tree fell in your yard or not, whether it fell on your car or not, whether it fell on your house or not. You had no control over whether you had power or not. When there's a time like that, we have to understand and remind ourselves we're not as large and in charge as we think we are. That our help comes from the Lord. The God who created the universe can also recreate. He's the God of creation. So let's bring it all the way forward to our day. You know, okay, what happened in St. Augustine was grace. A lot of damage and things. But then you go to Albany, Georgia, and you say, well, look up there, and there's a, a baby and, you know, and, and a child lost and, you know, and all these horrific things. Well, God's grace now is, is able to just to succor them and to help them and give them peace and, 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 and mercy through that. I think of the child. You know, until they reach that age of accountability, you know, when they when they died, they went to heaven. And that's mm-hmm. God gives us that because they're unable to make that decision yet for Christ. So that's his favor. That's his grace. A lot of times there's a mystery surrounding those things. And we wonder why God and, and where was God. But he's there all the time because he promises that he's not going to leave and forsake us. Mm-hmm. A lot of things we may never have the answer to until we, we get to heaven face to face. And the good part about that is, is once we get to heaven, we'll have perfect knowledge and then we'll understand. It's the old the old hymn we sing, you know, we'll understand it by and by. Well, we will then. But right now, if we lose perspective and we lose focus and our, our trust starts to lag a little bit and then our frustration sets in, you know, then we're going to doubt and we're going to wonder, where's God? Where is mm-hmm. he? He's there all the time. He hasn't left us. And, uh, and so we can always count on that. Better days come, we can say God was there and we can look back and see his hand and everything that happened. Mm-hmm. And why he protected us, his grace to help us get through. When you lose a child or you lose a loved one, um, whether you see it coming if there's been a prolonged illness or something tragic like like a tornado or, or a storm, you know it, it's painful. And you know I've, I've talked to a lot of people in, in the years I've been pastoring, and they'll say something like, "Well, it, it's you know you can never really get over it, but you just it gets easier to handle." 
as, as mm-hmm. time goes by. And that's, that's just God's grace. Mm-hmm. But there's where the church has got to really step up and, and be reminders of, of God's grace. Not annoying, not trying to, you know, to get in there in their, in their business, but just to stand by them and hold them up mm-hmm. during these times. So okay. that's, that's where the church comes in. You and I need to understand something. That this world at its worst needs the church at her best. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But if the, if the world ever needs to see what the church really is and what Jesus is really like, then He ought to see it in times like this. I am grateful for the partnership with pastors and with churches. I'm grateful that Wednesday night we were able to go to First Baptist Albany. We had no power here. And uh, have a prayer service and various pastors around town and Billy Graham Disaster Relief uh, to be present to give an update. And then for us to pray with people from other churches. I am very grateful that uh, when I called Daniel Simmons and said, Daniel, we have a funeral of one of our deacons and we don't have power, and Kimball Stern doesn't have power, he said, you come to Mount Zion and make our church your church. And so 300 people gathered on Thursday afternoon for a member of our vision planning team and our deacon body who died on Monday night for us to have a a worship service and an honoring service for him to sing of the Lord and to speak of the Lord to people in this community in the midst of a very bad time. I'm very blessed by Georgia Baptist Relief, by the Red Cross, by Samaritan's Purse, by Billy Graham Disaster Relief Team, by the first responders. So through all of that, um, the church, we've, we've reached out to them to encourage them. We go by and we pray with them. Um, probably the most glaring thing they had to face was uh, waiting on FEMA and the insurance companies to settle and getting all those things. And now, majority of them are in the process now of just putting everything back. Mm-hmm. So, um, but they, they did well. There was a fatigue factor, um, and there was the uh, the heartache factor. You know, one couple I'm thinking of, um, Doyle and Betty Sue, um, they left and went to their daughter's home in Palatka. And when they came home, they had a couple of inches of water uh, in their condo, and that was okay. And they were they were blessed because of that. But then they went outside and they have two garages and one, they left their van in the garage and all of their heirlooms, um, books, keepsakes of their van had about three foot of water in it. So they lost everything in there. Um, they lost all of those things. And so, you know, they had to clean it out. And of course, everything had to be thrown away because of, of the water and the surge. And they're fine with that. Um, they call it a purging. But mm-hmm. um Majority of them, I, and they all they all did well. Even some of our, our widows, um, they did well. They um, they lost they lost a lot of things, and mm-hmm. so but they 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 bounced back and uh, and they're doing it well. A lot of it has to. I think the key is is just the church family being there for them, mm-hmm. um, not telling them you know if you need me call me kind of mm-hmm. thing. Going by and making yourself available, um, that's the key. Um, not annoying them, but mm-hmm. just going by, checking on them, bringing them food, um, checking on them. Uh, John and Charlotte, or, or just a they were just overwhelmed by just the response of some folks coming in. And then there's some folks that needed some financial help, and so we were able to help them with that too. Mm-hmm. The church is very generous in that area. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Elohim is one of the names of God. It means the one to whom all power belongs. In Isaiah 45:7. God says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create calamity. I, the Lord, do all these things. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is God's purpose for bringing disaster and pain? Well, again, go back to the garden, okay, in the fall. And in that verse in Isaiah, what you've got to understand is, is that when God says, I create this and this, he's taking responsibility for everything. Mm -hmm. If he didn't, then you say, where's his sovereignty? Mm -hmm. Okay. He's over all of that, and God will use evil for his good, and he gets glory even from wicked men and unrighteous men. Mm -hmm. And so in that, I I think God, he uses it to discipline. He uses it to get our attention. I remember there was times when I was young, my dad would always say, you know, if you're going to play out in a certain part of our yard, we had sand spurs. This is down in South Florida. He says, you need to make sure you have your tennis shoes on. Well, every once in a while, you know, I wouldn't do that, and I'd get sand spurs. Mm -hmm. And that would be a reminder that what did my dad say? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do what your father says. If I would have done that, then I wouldn't. And it's the same thing with God. He warns us and he says, there's certain things I want you to do. And there's certain things that, you know, I'm trying to protect you. 
But then you've got those who are, who are the innocent victims of those things. But then again, because they know the sovereignty of God and that God is a God of love and he would never do anything to harm them, it, it's, they understand it. They may not like it, but we understand it But because God is moving. Nothing else. It's an example. Okay, Christians never get sick. We never have to go to the doctor. We never have to have surgery. Yeah, those things happen to us, and people then they get to see the grace of God and the peace of God and the love of God and the trust we have in God, even through times when, you know, it's not our fault. It just happens. And mm -hmm. so it, it's almost a, it's a two-sided coin there. Mm -hmm. And so, but all of the overall picture is, is that God is sovereign even in an unbeliever's life, and God is sovereign even in, in the believer's life. We can talk philosophically all day about, you know, evil in the world and why it happened and that kind of thing. But what would you say to a mother who had a child ripped out of her arms in a tornado? That would be very difficult because you, you've got to help her to see past the emotion, mm -hmm. uh, the loss, um, especially a mother, and that's her child. I mean, I mean, she gave birth to that child. She, there's an intimacy there that, that you know, men, we, we don't know. We, we, can't, we can't even go there. And I would not try to um, convince her and just you know beat her over the head with scripture saying you know you got to trust you got to believe mm -hmm. no you, I, you can't do that because that's unfair to her mm -hmm. god made ladies um, women they're, they're they're the subjective part men are the objective part that's why when two become one um there, there's such a match there mm -hmm. um and so and th there's emotions there and there's feelings and that you know you have to be very very careful with the easiest thing and the best thing to do for me is when i'm there if i know them is is just to be there for them I don't need to preach a sermon. I don't need, and when I pray, you know, I don't. I just have to be very, very careful. I have to remind her of God's grace, and that God loves her, and that He's going to hold on to her and get her through this. I don't. I don't try to just build this this platform, you know. That you know, well, you need to do this. You need to claim this verse, and you need to step out in faith, and you need to let go and let God. She can't do that. She's not ready for that. Mm -hmm. And and that's that's not a curse on her. That's because that's the way God made her. That's the way God made made the women, the ladies. He made them that way. And so I'm, I'm not going to come in there. And if anyone's going to help her get through this and speak to her heart, it, it's going to be the Lord Jesus because he's going to hold her in his arms. And he's going to, to comfort her. If nothing else, I'm just available. I, I, don't, I don't say, well, you know, if you had more faith, you know, you could do this. And, you know, you need, you need to kind of buck up here. That's not grace. That's legalism. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if anybody can, can do that, can mm -hmm. get through that. So the Lord has to do that. And so we're, we'll just be that that vessel that he can speak through and uh, will be the instrument that he can use. He is totally aware of what you're going through, what you need, what you feel. God is our helper and he is our keeper. He not only helps, he keeps, he watches over, he's standing guard over us. One man said to one of our staff members, I've been in Vietnam, I've been shot and I've been stabbed. And I've never been more afraid than I was Monday night. Folks, that's where the church needs to say what Jesus said. Fear not. I'm with you. God is with us in the storm. Doesn't God sometimes use pain in our lives to strengthen us too? I've heard you talk about that. Mm -hmm. C.S. Yeah. Lewis says pain is God's megaphone. Mm -hmm. and sometimes he uses it to get our attention. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he uses it to uh, to bring us back to uh, ground zero. It's, it's amazing um, when I've had numerous surgeries, um, orthopedically, <laughs> because I'm I'm goofy. But the uh, the thing is, every time that happens to me uh, in my life, I slow down and my priorities get real simple, and life is real easy for me. Because when you're on crutches for a while, um, you, you don't hurry about. Mm -hmm. you're, you're not wide open, um, and so. But yeah, uh, pain pain's good for us. It reminds us again of of, of okay. Well, to tell you, I have pain tomorrow. I don't have pain, but I, I just I rejoice in the good days when I'm pain free. Mm -hmm. um, and there's they're always that polar opposite of each other. It's hard for us to see pain in in a child, to see mm -hmm. pain uh, in a, in a senior adult. Um, you know, and and pain with someone who's you know they have a, a a debilitating disease. I mean, that's 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 horrific for us to see that because you know you, you can't do anything for them. But um, but yet, God has given us pain. Um, I know of a man who's lost all the, the feeling in his hand, and I, I mean he can pick up a hot pan, mm -hmm. and 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 he burns himself on the outside, but he doesn't feel it. So pain is is 
is important because it warns us. It's a warning system that goes off. And uh, sometimes um, I've seen this. Uh, you used to have a couple sit in front of you. I, when I was pastoring in North Carolina, they lost a 14-year-old son to cystic fibrosis. He was born with it. Um, he was in the. He was 12 years old. Duke gave him a full ride. Uh, he had mathematical skills that were just off the charts. He took his ACT just for fun and just blew it out of the water. And uh, so they gave him, and they were going, to, and they had they had their eyes on him. And uh, but he had issues, and so he died when he was 14, right there at Duke Hospital. And I remember I was there with the family, and the husband and wife they they wouldn't they wouldn't they just stay away from each other. Mm-hmm. You know, the husband was mad because it was his gene, and and she was mad, and so they had this going on. So finally, um, I had to go by the house one night and see him, and I, I said, you know what you guys need to do? Y'all need to hug. I said, two become one. I said, now you're separating. I said, both of you have the same hurt. You have the same pain. I said, y'all just, y'all just need to, don't even try to figure it out, and, and quit, stop letting your minds race. And I said, and uh, y- y'all just need to hug. And I got up and walked out. And when I walked out, I looked back, standing in the living room, they embraced each other. And that's how they got through it. No argument, no trying to figure it out. He was a great kid. But you know what? They had a daughter that was three years older. He was just as brilliant. And, uh, and she went on and, and, and has done well in life. But they they just they wouldn't talk. They wouldn't touch. And that's what they needed. And sometimes people just need a hug. Mm-hmm. And without, without trying to figure it out, you're not going to figure it out. Because that's God's business. He does that. You know, like one man said, you know, if he allowed it to happen, then he's going to give you everything you need to get through it. Mm-hmm. And he does that. And then finally, he's the God of salvation. Verse 7, the Lord will protect you from all evil. He will keep your soul. The Lord will guard your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forever. How does God save us? God will save us in trouble. God will save us from trouble. But mostly, God saves us from sin. And He saves us from ourselves. Do you realize that God did not save Daniel from the lion's den? He saved Daniel in the lion's den. Spiritual pain is is important um, in our walk with the Lord. He convicts us of sin, and uh, and it's not that God comes along and torments us, but He's it's a wake up call. You know this is not good. You're going in the wrong direction. And so, what's the spiritual pain? Um, loss of fellowship, loss of his blessing, his favor upon you. Um, it's like going out in, in the spiritual wilderness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so pain is a good thing. Um, we don't like to talk about it. We actually don't like to feel it. <laughs> last time I, I was going for surgery, a, a year ago from today, last year, I, I had some surgery. And uh, the girl said, are you allergic to anything? I said, yeah, pain. And she thought that was cute. And I said, no, I'm not kidding. I said, I'm serious. I'm really allergic to it. I don't like it. Mm-hmm. But it tells me that something's wrong. Mm-hmm. when I have pain. So I need to figure out why. Mm-hmm. Whether it's physical, whether it's spiritual. Why am I having the pain? What's what's you know mm-hmm. afflicting me right now? So mm-hmm. yeah, it's good. I read once, I believe it was J.I. Packer, he said that God takes full responsibility for what happened at Calvary. And you're thinking, no, that can't be because you know the, the Romans and the unbelieving Jews, they crucified Jesus. Well, yeah, they did, but God used their wickedness and their ungodliness to bring about his glory Because in the cross, we have redemption. In the cross, we have forgiveness of sin. In the cross, we have God diverted the wrath that we deserve because of our sin. He diverted it all on Jesus. And so there, again, there's a beautiful picture of God's amazing grace. Mm -hmm. Sherwood can help meet some physical needs. Samaritan's Purse can help meet some physical needs. Other people can help meet physical needs. But at the end of the day, if we met your physical needs and we did not tell you that the greatest need of your life is Jesus Christ, we would have failed you. Because one day we're all going to die. And it's going to determine where we spend eternity. If we don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you you can be helped, and in a few weeks or a few months, you can get back to normal. But one day, they're going to pronounce you dead. And that moment, you will either spend eternity in heaven or in hell. And it won't matter how many good works you did. It won't won't matter how nice you were or, or how much stuff you had or anything else. That's not how you get to heaven. You get to heaven by admitting that you're a sinner. 
You get to heaven by understanding that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You get to heaven by understanding that there's none righteous, not one, nobody. That our righteousness is as filthy rags in the eyes of God. That our good works are nothing in the eyes of God. That that won't save us. That won't get us to heaven. When we get to heaven, it's when we realize that we are walking in the wrong direction. And the Bible calls it repentance. And we repent and we turn from the way we've been walking, depending on ourselves, depending on our resources. And we turn to God and we say, God, I need you to save me. I need you to change my life. And in that moment, God comes in and does what His Word says He will do. He saves us to the fullest. A lot of times when people go through things, the first question they ask is why? Mm -hmm. Is there anything wrong with asking why? No, no, no. He made us that. We're we're inquisitive beings. Mm -hmm. Um, Of course, as you get older, you know, and we look back and we think, well, why not? You know, yeah. And we see the, the track record, and we so now know why. I probably have a good idea why that happened. Um, but no, there, there's nothing. It's not, it's not doubting someone's faith. It's not doubting. You shouldn't, that shouldn't be an issue. You should say, why? I mean, and God will fill in the answers. He'll answer. And, you know, there's yes, no, and, and wait. Those are the answers we get in prayer. So sometimes, you know, we wait. And, but all along, we have to, we have to, if you ask why, then you're asking, okay, I have to trust his answer. So if he says no, or he says yes, or he says or he explains it, you know, um, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, I think it's verses 4, talks about that that the God who comforts us um, does that so that we can comfort others when they come into their, their, their issues. And then Galatians uh, 6 talks about how we need to bear one of those burdens. So mm-hmm. there's the experience of having gone through a, a very difficult time. Um, my mother-in-law, uh, she is a a master at comforting someone who's lost a child because mm-hmm. she lost a child, 47 year old son. Mm-hmm. And so, and it's, it's, and it's painful for her, but, but I mean, she, and she, there's not a lot of, she's just there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and she's not trying to compete. Well, my son did this and I had to go, no, it's none of that. It's just saying, you know, I know your loss. I lost a son. That's all she has to say. And then there's such a bond there and it's unspoken. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and God does that. You know, everything that happens to all of us in our lives um, is, is, is for a reason. Um, never been in, in the hospital a day in my life. At the age of 30, I, uh, I messed up a knee, uh, snow skiing, and, um, and I had to have reconstructive surgery and all that. And I remember when I was, you know, before then, before the, the accident, really I fell, um, being goofy again. I would go to the hospital and people have a surgery, you know, and I just, I, I was just impassioned. I mean, you know, okay, you got to get over this, do what they tell you to do. And now I go and I just want to crawl up in the bed with them and say, you, this is going to be the worst thing you ever had in your whole life. You know? This therapy bad. Oh my stars. You know? No, I, but it is. I understand now because I've been there. I've been there. And if you take all of that and even with the hurting and the unexplained, and you go to Hebrews 4, and it talks about that Jesus experienced everything that you and I will ever experience, yet without sin. And so that's why he can comfort us. That's why, because he understands and he knows when we're, when we're one. You remember in the garden, he says, Father, take this cup from me. Was that a doubt? Was he trying to get out of it? No, that was his humanity coming out. Jesus, he was going to the cross. He was going to die. But yet God gives us a glimpse of his humanity. Take this. Then all of a sudden there's that pause. He says, Nevertheless, that will be done. Well, that's where we are. Mm-hmm. Lord, you know, I don't want to go through this, but I will. And I'm going to. And, and I know that the same God who put me here is, is, the, is the God who's going to carry me through this. Mm-hmm. And so life's tough. And a lot of times um, we fill the air with words, and um, that's not what they need. They just, they just need to know that somebody cares. We may not understand it. But I'm here with you, and I'm, I'm here for you. Mm-hmm. So sometimes that, that means more than than an answer. Share the call.